Hello and welcome back to a brand new video by Vertex Investing. Now, in today's video, let me hide this actually, someone picked up on my, uh, the reason why it's called Wastemans, uh, if you're from the UK, you'll obviously know what Wastemans actually means, but um, basically uh, my watch list changes, uh, it depends, these are the loyal ones so far, but you know, when pairs start to annoy me a little bit, I kick them for for a while and then they come back that, that's literally why it's called that so in this video this is actually a suggestion from one of the comments actually about talking about ranges now before we do that you need to understand what is actually happening and why these ranges are forming that have like these huge impulses so essentially when price is when price is consolidating right that is essentially the institutions stacking orders right so if you see it in that sense what they are doing they are forming a cause for a move okay now what happens after that is essentially what gives us um the footprint that they leave behind because say for example they have this move right that's a buy to sell right so essentially they are sacrificing that buy position okay to push price away grabbing liquidity and then making a range and then what tends to happen is price is coming back right price is going to come back and mitigate that's essentially what is happening at every given order block and that's essentially why order blocks works and we are trading the footprints that's left behind and for example in this position right so price is price is being sold to be pushed up right so they need to mitigate their sell so the reason why the order block is the last um, on the order block for a bullish move the reason why it's the last sell candle is purely because um, that is where the la that is the last point where the banks have sold before price has been pushed up that's why we are trading order blocks in the way that they are so, and if you don't understand that log logic sorry <laughs> if you don't understand that logic then there's probably there's no point in you trading just yet you have to understand the reason behind every trade that you take it's not just a break of structure and finding the lowest candle it's not about that right you just have to understand the theory as to why price is doing what it does right so just bear that in mind now in terms of finding ranges now ranges essentially uh let me find you some i'll find you some good examples um okay so let's talk about this entry for example now this entry i'll explain on the five minute actually yeah so so yeah as we can see in terms of um what is happening is remember i said that price accumulates and causes and builds a cause right that's essentially what is happening here and then what happens is price shoots up and comes back down to mitigate this order right now it doesn't it doesn't always come and clear these lows because what we can see is from this point of view is we have this low that's formed then we have a new low which is grabbed liquidity remember i said liquidity is sitting below every single low right it's grabbing liquidity and then pushing up this structure failed to break the low which means that there's no strength to come to the downside essentially but then what happens you have this huge impulse that creates this uh, big bullish move right so what's actually happened is the institutions have stacked their orders here now they're ready to go right and they come back to mitigate their last orders before they continue because they've been pushing price they've been buying and selling between here to try and build the orders up and try and entice traders in so they're grabbing that liquidity and then once they've grabbed enough we don't know when that's going to be once they've grabbed that liquidity that's what causes this big impulse okay we will never know when this impulse will happen we just won't we just have to trade what we see so bear in mind we're not you know you don't want to trade opinions you don't want to trade predictions you want to trade what you are physically seeing and in terms of ranges what we can see is although we've forced structure to come to this range right so we've exited this range that's formed here so price is formed and pushed up right but we still can't ignore the fact that there's huge imbalance sitting there right so price still needs to come back and mitigate it and that's essentially what has happened right so that's the indication of a market structure shift
right? Although we can see that price has done this and it's broken structure again, right? So at this point, you're probably thinking, okay, so this is the new range. It is to an extent, but you can't ignore the fact that this, ha you have um, imbalance sitting below. So essentially what this is, so essentially what this is, this OB here, right, which causes move up, which broke this structure, is inducing traders to place their orders here, either at the open or the 50%, but price is really going to react from here. So it's grabbing liquidity from these traders that are doing that. So don't ignore the imbalance that's sitting there. It doesn't always do this, but it's probably your best bet and your safest bet is using, um, using the most extreme uh, point right obviously sometimes it is a little bit annoying where price does react from the top if you do get this situation where you don't know where to decide you can split your risk and put half percentage there and half a percentage there if you wanted to it's completely up to you or just use the most extreme um you know that that's a personal preference but the way to see it is every time you break a range because what happens is so now that we've broken from here, we've created a range from this, and then we exit this, and then we form another range, okay? And you keep going and following the price up as you go. But essentially what you're looking for is where this accumulation is happening, right? For example, look, we get accumulations here, right? Price gets pushed down and then it pushes up, okay? Same thing that's happening here. Price is accumulating, so price is accumulating in this rough range, right? Then it gets pushed down before it gets pushed up, right? So it's grabbing liquidity and then continues. Okay, price is sort of, it's still in a sideways range, but essentially the way to see it is this is pretty much a sign of strength, right? It's pretty much accumulating the orders. Obviously, I don't know if it's, gonna, if it's gonna continue. I'm still holding both entries. We don't know if price is gonna continue or not, but essentially it's just grabbing as much liquidity before it does a whole move because price does not just go up and up and up right or it doesn't go down 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 it has to accumulate liquidity enough it has to grab enough liquidity before making enough moves before making the overall move so essentially you need to wait for that impulse because these small moves they don't mean anything Right, you have to look for the impulsive moves where there's enough imbalance left behind because the way to see that is the institutions are causing that, not retail traders. So use that as your footprint and look for the last point that the banks have, if for example, in this situation where the institutions have sold from and look for the last point institutions have bought from if you're looking for a sell, for example. That's essentially what you have to look for. Now, a good way to, uh, I think GBP USD was a good one to show ranges. Uh, let's go in the four hour. I'm pretty sure it was this one. Yeah, so in terms of your high time frame, right? So we got this low here. And then we got this high. That is your trading range. And you know that roughly you want to trade from this OB, which price didn't come to anyway, and it's in the is in the discount pricing, right? Remember, it's below. It has to be below the fifty percent of that overall range. But once price it breaks that, you form a new range, and that becomes your new trading range. So this OB essentially becomes invalid, even though it's still not been mitigated. This can be a. This is a just known as a future reference point, because price doesn't need to respect every OB that's formed, right? It can violate it quite easily so that's what you need to realize is when you form a new trading range your first reaction not your first reaction your first instinct should go for the most um the one that's in the range right that's where you want to look for to trade from so essentially that will help you decide which ob's you feel is the best to use and it's the same thing in the lower time frames for example Say price has entered this OB, right? And you don't know if price is going to shift in structure here. So you essentially go into the lower time frame, right? So let's go to the I didn't even mark it out properly. Okay, but let's go to the let's go to the bottom and see what's happening. So in terms of structure, we can see that we formed this low. Sorry. 
we can see that we formed this low, then another low, and price broke structure. Now, that's not a confirmation that price is changing in structure. We need a failed structure and then a break. So we have a failed and then it breaks structure. That is your confirmation move that price is going to change. So that means taking an order from here is perfectly valid and you should be able to take that with full confidence. So if we're talking that in terms of ranges, and again, you can see it here where there's a range that's forming and there's an impulse, right? So see it that way. Uh, but if you talk about ranges, uh, for example, we can see that uh, we form this range here from this candle to to this high. It probably would have, would have been easier for me to draw, to be fair. Now, if once price breaks structure, we form another range from this high to this low, this candle low. So that's your trading range. But after we break structure again with, with that high, and this low, that's your trading range, right? So this helps you narrow down which OB you're gonna use. And it's quite clear you're gonna use this one because that's the one, that's the move that broke structure. You can refine that even more if you want. Um, you don't really have to, because this would have given you uh, a three, a th yeah, about a three pip stop. You know, you didn't have to, but you could have entered straight off this OB here. Now, so the reason why you can take that with confidence is because for structure to confirm, remember, is if you're going from, let me go from, yeah, if you're going from this situation, okay, we know that, uh, say, for example, you're coming from up here. If price breaks a high, for example, here, so this is a very bad example, actually. Uh, let me re... Let me redraw this. So say, for example, you're coming from up here and then suddenly you get a high that's been broken. Remember what I said, we don't know that price is going to change your structure until we get another break, right? So we have full confidence to take the trade off here because that indicates a shift in structure. And that is the point where that shift in structure happened and that originate, that move originated from that. But what we can see is that the accumulation was here that caused the impulse, right? That's the footprint that's been left behind. Now, although there is imbalance sitting below here, right? You still think that this is your first reference point and that is within the range that you're going to be looking at at that point. Although price and come and react of here, your higher probability entry would be from here because that's the one that originated the move that changed the shift in structure, right? So let's recap that. So we have this low, high, low, high. So we broke structure, okay, that's number one. And then we had another break, that's number two. Okay, that second break gives you a confirmation that that is a shift in market structure. So we know that we can take the entry from there. Same thing from here, like you can continue. You had another breaker structure, you had a range that's formed, right? Then the price didn't come back to this point of entry, right? It's fine. We had another break, okay? You just stick to your ranges. Price reacted to this OB, as we can see, it reacted here. So stick to the ranges and just practice on the one minute or the five minute, wherever you feel comfortable, and just practice on focusing on the structure shift. Because as I mentioned, that is the only thing that you're trading. But when you get these little bits of accumulation, right, don't feel like, um, yeah, don't feel as though, you know, price is going sideways because this is literally just accumulation of orders before an impulse. For example, here, we have accumulation here before the huge impulse even started, right? And that's what you'll notice, the impulse, they have accumulation impulse, right? And you'll have that on the lower time frames and the higher time frames, but you'll notice it more clear if you look at it from here, because this, this essentially your the first footprint before the impulse, right? So it confirms that institutions are active at this point. Now we did get a reaction from this point of entry somewhere here, right? But it wasn't strong enough. And what this is doing is the first impulse that's created, right? That reacted off here. It created relative equal highs. And what do we know? about equal highs, we know there is liquidity sitting there. Now this gives a reason for price to move higher, right? So it's creating a cause. So this is all creating a cause. This is creating a cause for price to push up, 
right now i hope i haven't confused you too much because you don't really need to think about it in that in that much sense i'm just giving you a bit of background detail behind why certain moves actually happen because as you know like i trade fully rule based so all this has been factored in to try and make it as simple as possible for myself okay that that was my main priority is making it as easy as possible for me um but essentially that is your structure that you're trading that's all you're going to look for doesn't matter what time frame that is what you're looking for and just remember the fractal nature of the market is that whatever happens in lower time frames will eventually replicate on the higher time frames but if you find this on a higher time frame range or higher time frame point point of interest for example this four hour this four hour ob which originated this move then you have a higher chance of being able to hold the trade all the way and that's essentially how it works but i'll leave you be for this video and uh, i'm sure there'll be more content to come also thank you for your recommendations and also thank you for subscribing as well and uh, sharing the videos um yeah and i hope that you'll stay safe uh, given the current pandemic and uh yeah trade safe and uh i'll see you next time